Good afternoon. My name is Alexey Chernik, and I'm the leading uh, um, specialist in the Ross Telecom. Today we'll be speaking about leaks, all kinds of leaks, not only leaks um, from databases, but all the way to the leaks of the shadow resources, uh, different online stores, and yes, leaks are usually. Um, happen in all kinds of companies and the small business and uh, even the um, common developers sometimes uh, allow this to happen. Sometimes we uh, hear about different cases. Uh, today we'll consider several cases of um, how to identify these inside cases, what to do with this. We will also look at the leaks from the logs, credentials, configuration files, and we'll try to find the password from the database without even approaching to a database, and uh, simply um, without collecting the whole bunch of leaks. In addition to cases, we'll discuss what can be um, um, found, why things are leaking away, and where you can find it uh, right here and right now, and how should you look um, for it in the future. We'll be discussing the right monitoring process um, and the process of uh, finding the links. So we'll be speaking about the metrics, because the, to monitor uh, attack um, attackers simply impossible uh, during the attack, but we can model certain threats and to avert these threats prior to attack. Let's begin by saying that before uh, looking for something, you have to understand what you're looking for. For a company, this could be corporate documents, original files, uh, tech information, contracts, uh, you name it. Each company has its own list. You simply have to build two lists. Number one would be the files you would like to find, and the second one is the text uh, data, because you uh, will be looking for these two things differently. In terms of the text information, you have to look for your search option, how of the big flow of data you'll find what you need. This could be a regular expressions, keywords, sim, uh, mean, hash, or the flexible search. And you have to um, take into account that the, the attackers are smart, and if they'll be writing something about you at the forum or social media, they will be, you know, using their own pronunciation, slang, abbreviations of your company, you name it, so that you would never be able to find them. Also, mind it that we are going to be using a lot of different search engines, web search engines, or um, or search functions and different resources. Their search algorithms are different, and one phrase, one um, word could be uh, decided uh, into like words. Each word will be normalized uh, in the nominative, nominative case, and then all the documents will be found which have the same uh, word or expression. So it would be um, sensible to make two sets of uh, two sets for search. With one, we are finding in search engines what we like, and, and secondly, we verify that this information is right. In addition to that, for files, we also can find several approaches. That is, we have two files, for example. I want to compare them. The classical approach would be um, uh, like in TI and everywhere to uh, to count uh, MD5 um, and SHA1, SHA256 uh, hashes. They will be different for different files. It's aggravated by situation if you'll just open the document in Word. The Word can add some information and the document will be different even though you did not change anything in a document. So MD5 hash uh, does not suit for this goal. Also, it's a cryptographic uh, hash function. For 100 documents, there'll be no difference. Quick calculation. But if you have the, like a million documents, it will create some additional challenges. And I would recommend to look uh, towards a city hash. It's quite uh, fast. It's good for this kind of uh, tasks. Also, there is a SSD hash uh, just for searching for malware when it's been uh, reconfigured. Uh, when there are certain changes in a file. It works just great, but it's also quite slow. You can use uh, uh, looker files by Yara rules, but the Yara rules we first have to write, which means the manual task uh, which we would like to avoid. Another approach is uh, we have the text data. We can extract all the text and to make a comparison um, like I've, I described for the text file. For example, you can use the sim hash and min hash algorithms which enable you to compare just how, uh, how different two texts are. But um, you should not use them just everywhere because if the particular wording or the structure of the text will be changed, the sim hash um, will uh, show you a big differences in the text. That would be good to use for uh, deleting the duplicates if one leak has been published in the forum, somebody just, let's say, quoted it in social media. Okay, we understand what we are going to look for. We build a list of files, the text, we have the list of signatures and search methods. But next we have to understand why this could leak at all. 
I will be very brief. We had many dis discussions about that, and the main reasons are insiders who decided to make money to leak data of yours or your clients, or simply to cause harm to your um, to your uh, company, including the ciphering. Also, there is a low qualification um, leaks, and uh, because of the lack of knowledge, many people do not know that that uh, the uh, to, you know to upload corporate files um, um, could be a bad idea because um, people can get access to them. We are humans, and to uh, to err is human. We may forget things. Oftentimes, admins they forget to delete backups, um, which they installed in the in the core of their web service. Sometimes uh, they uh, upload um, them data on the Git and then forget to clean it up. And of course, uh, compromising. You should not forget about it. If uh, you, the uh, email um, of your top manager has been uh, compromised and then all or, or the whole database has been stolen and published on the forum, knowing what we're looking for and what are the reasons, we can assume of where we could find this information and how. It's a, it's a greenfield. Let's begin with web resources, a classic. A classic case would be when somebody forgot a file on the web server, be it the configuration files or, or setting files or the database dumps, uh, you name it. This can be identified by search engines and darks and by the phasing or manual scanning. But there are some tricks here in case we're using the search engine and darks. Then we have the uh, problem, because the search engines, they do not like bots, and they are defending themselves. There are some additional limitations, and more often than not, you will uh, run into that. It is not that difficult. You can solve this problem, but if it's a dark uh, 4,000 darks, like in uh, DHDP, this could uh, be um, a certain mean certain differences. Difficulty. So many resources, for example, the SMM and um, advertisement, it's a problem. They always need to monitor just how, how popular their website is in terms of the search engine uh, optimization. CRPI uh, is a resource. It g makes inquiries to Google, and then um, the, the, uh, it gives you a JSON. It's not a cheap solution, but this is also an option. Or we can uh, just do it by hand. Do the, this capture, and the, but this, uh, you know, 4,000 captures, I don't want to do it. I will go to the anti-capture services which um, solve this kind of capture. Or we can do it differently. We cannot allow the uh, captures. Uh, you have to change API addresses, uh, do inquiries in different times of uh, change cookies, change your ha titles and hats, imitate your user's behavior, and many, many other problems which you have to solve, which is, uh, which is very dubious. Another option I would like to offer you is basically if you go like through the phasing. As an example, on the left, it's an uh, example of under the case when internal documentation of one government was uh, became available simply because they forgot to limit access uh, to one folder. You can identify it with a, with a, with a phasing. You have to identify what kind of files you want to find on the web server. You can go to the hunters and ask them to give the interesting files. Go to pen testers to get something from them or from item number first with the files. We can add also them to the dictionary, then take a uh, gerpaster, bow fast, and go to the server and to look for these files. But if to do it not once uh, each quarter, but every week or every day, because attackers are doing it always. Also, if the website is a web, uh, you, you have to bypass it somehow. You have to uh, switch it off at the production. It's not a best idea. The next thing would be the file service leaks. I mean, not only FTP service, but also C files, Nextcloud, or Amazon bucket. We'll consider only those where the authorization is switched off at this kind of service. Oftentimes, you can find documents and files, contracts. Very often, if you see that, usually it is happening because uh, somebody from the regional department, let's say, or from partners, uh, had to be, you know, handed documents, so they open access to everyone. You can find it uh, with uh, search engines. They're scanning internet and indexing files, such as the search FTPS or or Crayhead um, for buckets. But there is also a problem. When yesterday I was double checking all of that, I think uh, 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 Mac and, and Search of CPS did not work um, very well. They're unstable. We do not know how often they do the scanning. And to look for that, it's very difficult because if I'll find some leaks via them, then these leaks I will, um, I will uh, highlight to them. So I want to come myself and begin to um, scan internet. 
with a, a mass scan that maps uh, all sensors. Much has been mentioned about that, many articles have been published. I do not want to dig deep into that. Uh, but one aspect is there are very few programs enabling you to index um, uh, FTPR. The very few of them are published on the uh, open source or GitHub. But at the FTP, you can find a lot of interesting things. For example, if you look at the right slide, you can see a lot of videos and uh, strange things. But also, you can find some uh, collections of the leaks, uh, its own exploits and leaks, and then some company documentation which has been found in one of the FTPs in Russia. Next, the class of leaks which are becoming more popular. It's uh, databases leaks without authorizations. We've heard about the database uh, via Elastic. Uh, ClickHouse and many other databases. You can uh, look for them also through the by scanning internet yourself or using external services. But um, but I couldn't find any good services, so you have to do it yourself. You can do it yourself, Mascan uh, and uh, Census and Shodan, or you use the uh, Memcache Dead or, or ClickDown programs. And convenience is that these kind of programs, which would be indexing databases, they are huge. You can choose anything. Those will be more convenient. The next topic, very painful, is the original Git repository. Oftentimes, in addition to the original files, you can find configuration files, logs, uh, forgot backups and dumps, or create. To look for this kind of uh, leaks, we can find the search engine which is built in into Git, for example, GitHub, and uh, Dork written for it. But also for the GitHub, there's also events uh, IP, a TPI, which enables you in real time to collect all the public, e public events which are happening on the GitHub. Each commit, each push, merge, request, everything you can collect it, and in real time you can trace it. What are the challenges? One of them is writing dorks. It sounds um, sounds easy, but it's a huge problem because open dorks there are awful. As an example, the, the domain uh, the domain password it's a classical dork. It, there is a huge number of cases it misses. If you're testers, they're usually going to for IPv4, IPv6. They use domain very rarely. Or if the internal server of the company is being tested, you cannot use the public domain. You're using internal domain, for example, my comp my company.local. Or if you're in the active directory, my.company will be DC, my DC company. And your domain simply will not, will not be any other words. And also another case like GDBC, where you can pass the passwords in URL, but the keyword password will not be there. And always consider also that for each language there are their own databases and syntaxes of description. For example, for Python I built a list of libraries libraries, which could be used uh, for working with different databases, and I described different dogs for them. It was an experiment of mine. And here you can see a lot of libraries. You cannot find any like password or talking words, only authorization in one place. Unfortunately, the the output of these dorks is quite arguable, but um, for Alexa Top 100 it works very well, and you can find Alex with big biggest companies, at least. Next will be uh, passed. We know that the uh, admins are very evil. They, oh, they load up the logins. It's a problem still persists. It's a very relevant problem. To look for these kind of leaks is possible if you do web search engines, uh, Google, Yandex, Bing, or using built-in uh, built uh, search engine, which is very rare or the most popular way in real time. You collect all the documents from the resource and to look um, to look for any new lines, text, li text lines, or files coming into them. There's a huge number of uh, programs and services, be it Elform in 4, uh, Paste Hunter, or PWB. Also, a lot of companies provide it as the brand protection service. But one detail, important detail, almost all of them are monitoring only the popular paste, paste B, uh, GitHub, and many people do not monitor anything other. But the problem is that, for example, in our case, to, uh, when we speak about the company's subsidiaries, Postabin could be uh, blocked, but the admins used to working with them, but they are blocked right now. They will not, uh, they'll just open the Google and find a different uh, past and will be uh, posting into that. Most of these programs and framework and brand protection, it's very difficult for them to get or add any new resource. Even though it is an open source, it's simply incredibly difficult sometimes to add uh, just a new resource. Uh, you know, governor code, whatever, the bust uh, into these frameworks. Next would be forums. It's a topic for several hours. We can be easily talking for hours about that. 
we are interested not only um, about the uh, dork forums, but also about legitimate forums. Sometimes in one forum, the guys are discussing new electric car, it's a pure, it's electric car, it's a super, you know, the, but uh, in the other branch, the they are they are uh, discussing of how to uh, get the money from the next ATM or steal the money from ATM. It's a problem. We need to get this info from the huge number of uh, of uh, the forum threads. But it's not that difficult to monitor that, because the forums sometimes are so dark they're greatly indexed by the web searches. For example, many of you have heard about Freaker forum or Lomziti BHF. It's simply just the top of the iceberg. Even that is indexed. But if you dig down, you can find uh, much more interesting and even absurd things at all forums. So you can see um, RSS or the Adam uh, uh, thread. You can collect the news or you can write your own parser because all the forums are using three engines except for uh, uh, WebLute, Ballot In. I don't know how to read it correctly or panel board. But here we also have a huge number of complexities because uh, in our forums, for example, we have 10 or 20. To register an account and to pump it through to have a good reputation and to get access to the closed uh, sections is not that easy. For 10, 20 it may be okay. But let's say we're monitoring about 80 forums right now. And to keep 80 accounts and pumped up accounts would be very, very difficult. It kills a lot of time and sometimes it's even easier just to uh, neglect some of them. On a separate note, all the forms are using uh, DOS Protect, uh, Cloudflare, or custom uh, uh, Jensen scripts because oftentimes one form is attacking the other. It's an um, internal problem. We cannot parse uh, Python requests. We have to use the, uh, the Serena, which will render JavaScript, or we can use the census uh, to bypass Cloudflare and to find a real IP address. Basically, all the forms are tuned up incorrectly. Also, at the forums, uh, sometimes empty bot is coming back, different systems. At all the forums, you can see a page with a recent user activity. If one user at 2 a.m. is coming into the uh, recent messages um, uh, section, you know, it's suspicious, sounds funny, but we've been kicked out from the three forms. Um, nah. Also, do not use the search engine for the forms to look for information about your company, because any inquiries, any search inquiries in the search line on the forums are being traced, traced and tracked. And then you can see the separate topic about your company. It, it, was, it will be done just for you. Usually, three engines are used in different versions. Uh, one parse, parse for, ten, for one forum, but you can parse uh, ten forums, but it's a huge uh, advertisement. But advertisement is so much, it simply kills the structure of the page, and the browser is smart, it's correcting mistakes. And in case, if, you, if you're parsing on the Python, you can also find the link which will correct it, or correct it with your hands, which is not very convenient. The next would be file share uh, leaks and torrent tracker leaks. With file shares, I means like Yandex, Omega, Mail, SenseSpace, and others. They're mostly take care of the security and privacy of their users. So it's simply to take all the files which have been added, that you cannot do it. Or it, it is very difficult, or it is illegal. So we have to monitor social media, or to monitor forums and pa pages, and to look for this kind of links. After that, you can uh, um, download the files and see what you have. I would recommend you to consider, if you'll be doing this, Jigan Olders and Pile Loader, J Loader and Payload. They give them the link and they um, upload the file. Some Sounds like a simple task, but if you have several thousands of links, believe me, it's not an easy task. On a separate note, we could speak about torrents. For torrent trackers, torrents can be monitored in different ways uh, via torrent trackers. For example, you have a framework, Tulsa Jacker, which enables Jacket, which enables you to do the search and indexation of a huge number of torrent trackers. Part of the trackers are open, and you can easily see what's available, what's the new things, and find some information. But the other part of forums usually is closed. You have to look for invites and simply to uh, search for them on the internet, or simply to pump up your reputation to give away something to get uh, the access. On a separate note, a dash tag network, it's a distribution of the hash table. When you are getting um, this kind of link, you get, you get a hash. Your client will be looking for this hash among the different network clients. Your computer will go to the other, will ask, do you have this kind of file with this kind of hash? If not, then who has it? As a result, this is an open network. We can connect to this, uh, our own agents, which will be listening to all these inquiries. And to collect this information, index it for our purposes, you can use one of the open one of the open TorSniff, for example, TorSniff. 
or one of the open projects and uh, to keep the local base or to use the existing services which will be indexing everything for you and will be doing giving you the search opportunities one of the most popular was better dig but about a month or two months ago for some reason it quit working but fortunately there are a lot of Chinese mirrors and you can find quite a good quite a good uh, leaks uh, you know 600 gigs worth the data may not be relevant but it, all the data is correct virus total and the hybrid analyzers these services many have heard about them you may upload the file and the service will tell you just how malignant this file is how to, what do you do, sandbox it or do something else to look for leaks of these kind of resources. You'll have to use either the search engines or to use built-in functionality or the custom uh, parsers. For example, on Aristotle, you can build for the monitoring certain yardage, yardage rules. As soon as it will work, you will get your alert. As for the good programs which will be enabled to search, there are not that many. Even those that you can see, they're not very good. They're not very convenient. The shops and auctions, actually, there are a lot of problems with them because they're a shadow. They're so shadow that almost all of them do not index by the search engines, which is surprising. Main problem with these is to find them. You'll have to go uh, to different forums and different resources to look for them, but eventually it's not that difficult to find them. Then you have to register and you get access to a shop. All, the, all shops have the pages with the recently added merchandise. It increases loyalty, people see that you can buy right away things which were not available before. And shops could be different in the auctions. Here I've shown you uh, the account selling shops. Oftentimes, uh, on the left, um, the shops has never been developed uh, for the shadow tasks. Uh, and it sells a lot of good things. But there is a, a separate you know, section for accounts like the banking, CRV, they sell whatever, you name it. It's easy to parse them. The main problem is to find and to get invade, invite. There are a lot of uh, automated programs. You, there are no automated programs. You have to do everything manually. Uh, social media, social networks. I'm not very enthusiastic. There are a lot of uh, articles about SMM, um, a lot of articles from the safety security guys. I, I gave you on the right the list of the programs which are being used to analyze Twitter, for example. You can look uh, uh, through the web searches, do the real-time monitoring, for example, uh, streaming IP, you can, you can give the keywords and uh, you can get all the notions about these keywords at these resources. Or you can monitor uh, specific users, the groups and the pages and channels. One of the main problems, like in the forums also, you have to have a good accounts which are in the closed groups to monitor the data from these groups. You also have to, um, you have to look at um, different information like documents and notions about documents, pictures uh, from office, from the corporate party, um, you name it. News. News would be the last thing where you can uh, look for information. They're very arguable because usually at the news resources, journalists are publishing something if they found something, like the blackmail uh, for your boss or something else. But the question is, why do we need to monitor them? Because the scandal is just about to erupt. Oh, very often, many, many news resources and scandals, they break out with a small publication in the newspaper, in the magazine, or any other publication. Then a couple of hours later, it begins to be cited in all the jo journals and magazines. If you find the source, number one, at least you'll have like two hours before everyone else uh, to make the press release, to delete materials from the Internet, and to get any kind of uh, report or response to the press or minimize, mitigate a possible reputation damage. But in another in the aspect of the news, it's very easy to monitor the news. A lot of uh, news aggregators, searching uh, machines, and it, almost all of them have the atom um, uh, and RSS. It's very simple and convenient. Knowing how all of this can be leaking away, what it may be leaking, what are the reasons, let's consider some cases, and hopefully we'll be able to do it today. Case number one. The attackers created the phishing page uh, or the malignant site to collect uh, different kind of data by users like email, passwords, date of birth, uh, sex, uh, age. Then this data is stored on the web server. It's very difficult to use the uh, external database, so simply they put it in the text files, for example, like on the screenshot, sometimes not even limiting access to the folder with logs, which you can upload and keep using. After They've collected this database, they use it uh, for their own purposes, it's a phishing website, they're trying to go, go to the user's uh, accounts. If it's a fraudsters, they're trying to do the frauds, though they get what they want, but they still uh, get the database, which they do not need anymore. Usually after that, they simply uh, upload it at the different forums, 
like the like the like a private information for others to be able to take advantage of it. After that, another category of the malign actresses. Um, playing in the game. They're downloading these leaks and double-checking them, for example, uh, for the unique factor, they want to know, uh, can I use it for myself or not? Is there any, like, a publics and other programs uh, to double-check this database, verified database? If this leak is unique, they immediately run it into a checker, so that to double-check the login and password at different websites, and usually they want to know this kind of services where you can take the money, gaming, sometimes uh, VPN, form hub, VPS, and different other things. Uh, they can get their hands on. After they get account, they sell it in different shops. Another category is repackaging uh, somebody else's databases. They're taking closed uh, leaks, they repackage them, combine them, and then to um, reload them to different forms to get the reputation. Because sometimes you know, when, they, when the group somebody's publishing a leak, this leak is quite fresh. Nobody has this, uh, this, uh, this leak. It doesn't make sense to give it to everybody. So the first group is taking the leak, um, uploading it to the uh, file sharing. If it's a small file, they use the sense space, uh, they use the file sharing services with a very short uh, file um, life size. If it's a big one, they use a Yandex mail. If uh, globally, it's usually Niagara. And the uh, li uh, link is published on the forum with limited access, if you have uh, 500 plus messages or something like that. And these groups are usually do not even use encryptions. It's not done. And all the files are not encrypted. It's simply easy to get uh, the link. And if you get the link, you get the whole link. The next group uh, would be of the fraudsters. They're collecting the leaks for a long time until they get a critical mass of these leaks. For example, it's 1.4 billion leaks. And it's the same thing. They've collected a huge number of uh, different leaks um, uh, throughout one or one and a half years and published it on a forum. On the next day, in all the media, there was a scandal, you know, some, uh, leak, huge leak, but it's nothing new. The separate groups, uh, very bad ones of the of the uh, violators, they're looking for email addresses, uh, domains, or usernames. And their goal is that they have done uh, some reconnaissance and intel, and they know that your uh, your company is using this kind of email. And they're looking for this in the leaks. As soon as it ends up in the leak, they go to your email address, upload all of your mail, and very often uh, upload it to the auctions for the incredible amounts of money to sell the whole contents uh, of the mailboxes. On a separate note, the next case would be insiders. Just imagine this picture, a regional department of a bank or the mobile network operator. It's an employee looking uh, you know, to make more money, is uh, at the forum in one of the pages, so the forum is offering a quick money, quick revenue, but you have to be an employee of a particular company. And fortunately, this guy is actually an employee of this very company, and he is just the right fit. After about 10-15 minutes of uh, the chat, he knows that uh, he'll be given the phone numbers and his goal is to give uh, passports and the names of each passport holders in the company. He agrees to that. After a while, uh, he uh, he gets imprisoned, usually. And usually these kind of services are um, are published on the forums uh, for uh, for cardings, uh, for uh, finding different sets of information from the users. And quite often uh, the market changes uh, very fast because the first uh, controlled uh, buy and uh, they'll be jailed. So the prices are quite low and the demand is very high. A separate case, which is quite funny actually. We all know uh, how online stores work. So the market needs to be uh, grown, so you need to uh, increase sales and so on. So, on. so uh, one of the online stores to provide uh, control substances decided uh, to uh, go online. Uh, so, But the problem is that they have a developer for the Telegram bot. So uh, they go out uh, to the market and after several days uh, they found a candidate. After a small interview, uh, he's found to be a good fit and a deal with them. Uh, is done over uh, the uh, Garant system. So the candidates uh, don't seem to be baffled. Uh, they write a, boat, a bot, but uh, the owner of the store does know how to set up the passwords, uh, pass passwords and uh, tokens, so uh, they go to a freelancer. But uh, they uh, need to arrange uh, for the collaboration of the freelancer so that they shouldn't have access. So the freelancer uh, 
you know, sets up uh, the bot and uh, loads it to GitHub uh, with an instruction to the owner, uh, load it to your server and run. So what happens, uh, the owner of the store is happy that they have a bot, the developer is uh, happy uh, that uh, they have the money, and we're also quite happy because we have the entire client base. A separate case is about testers. Uh, when an order comes for testing, quite often you have uh, to quickly test some product or service. So testers like uh, write some scripts, uh, programs, usually uh, on uh, a lab, uh, and because the script uh, is being written very fast, and it's quite uh, and it's one time, so they don't fear uh, to lose credentials. So the testing can run. Um, they identify, uh, detect a lot of bugs. So uh, they uh, choose to use this uh, script look at, uh, looking forward. Then colleagues uh, get interest to this uh, script, and because our employee is quite kind, so they share the script, forgetting uh, to delete the uh, latest testing credentials. And there are lots of uh, mistakes like that, both in banks and government organizations and large corporations. So this is my favorite case, and perhaps yours as well. It's when an admin uploads uh, lo logs to GitHub. I don't know what I can add here. Well, that's very bad, a bad thing to do. Too much critical information is leaking through some logs. And quite often it happens because uh, the uh, employee uh, is on a vacation and goes home. So you can't look through log files from a phone or from a tablet. And copying uh, logs to a messenger. Uh, is uh, not a better experience. So what they decide is uh, better uh, put it on uh, T bins, paste, paste bins, uh, and then uh, to take a look at those logs at leisure. So and they send uh, a link to a security professional or administrator uh, for them to take a look. A separate case. It's uh, been existing for quite a long time. Uh, it's about exciters. So in forum. Uh, there are separate topics to discuss databases, such as uh, databases of uh, private individuals, legal entities, and all sorts of companies, customers, like that. So the peculiarity here is that you need uh, to have a reputation to get access to the information uh, that's considered interesting, uh, maybe make a contribution. Uh, add some database. So a lot of users uh, come to the workplace and start looking at what they can uh, grab there. It happens because uh, quite a lot of uh, things like that happen in regional branches. Well, for instance, you have an XLS document that's used uh, to build a report. Of course, uh, we can control the request uh, to the database, but who's used this file? It's absolutely uh, impossible. And such files leak quite often. And so there was uh, quite a funny case here. A group of researchers uh, uh, who like, uh, you know, trying to explore new technologies, doing forensics, such like. You can't blame that uh, until uh, they've encountered a transport map, a transport card for their own city, where you can talk, which you could top up, top up. So one evening they decided uh, to explore the content of this card. It turned out uh, to be uh, one of the latest versions was protected against most attacks, but uh, one of the key uh, turned out uh, to be a card uh, quite uh, uh, brute forceable. Uh, so. Uh, uh, in the evening, one of the members of the group uh, remembered a recent uh, vulnerability uh, that uh, allowed using one key to uh, break all other keys. And he decided to test it in his card. So he did that back home. Uh, so he uh, broke a lot of keys, but not all of them. Uh, so he just uh, wrote to uh, his friends on the forum, so saying, oh, look, this is the way I broke these keys. Uh, try uh, to uh, do better. I'm I would only hope that they uh, try not to break uh, the passport database or internal passes. So let's now consider uh, how where and where things can leak. We have lots of services, programs, sources, 
And for instance, if we want to monitor all of these, we need to have a huge uh, zoo of uh, programs uh, that would uh, crawl uh, and uh, go, uh, keep going through your systems uh, looking for leaks. But having such a zoo consisting of more than 50 services is absolutely inconvenient. Also, uh, a lot of resources are not monitored and leaks, uh, some leaks are uh, skipped. So let's uh, start from the source. We have a huge number of sources. So for each source, uh, we need our own worker process uh, that uh, will uh, come uh, to the source, uh, get the information, and bring it uh, to, a, uh, to some unified uh, form that uh, we could analyze. It could be regular expression of keywords or file hashes, whatever. Uh, in addition to that, uh, because uh, we have huge uh, influx of events, uh, if you take GitHub, uh, the uh, event flow there is uh, more or less homogeneous in time, uh, but it's huge. In other forums, uh, the distribution of messages can be uh, very uh, uh, inhomogeneous. So you can use the workers who would uh, look each through its own source. Also, you need to access access. Uh, you need to pass access tones to uh, many resources, or to uh, pass uh, proxies for resources that, for some reason, are not uh, available. Also, you need to store a list of uh, keywords, regular expressions, so on. So, a database uh, like Q Value, for instance, would be a good fit, a good tool for that. In addition to that, so we can collect all this information, uh, bring it to the common uh, form, and uh, look for what we need. So, it makes sense now to. Uh, think that we need to store it there. I chose Elasticsearch because it's most uh, popular and a good fit for this purpose. It has UI Kibana, Kibana UI to analyze information, and Elast alerts uh, for alerting when new uh, leaks are found. So a prototype of this service was developed. It was uh, developed on Python 3.7. Uh, Night streaming was used as a queuing message and console was used uh, so that uh, later on all workers and processors uh, will uh, turn uh, to a meta service architecture microservice architecture. So each worker and processor uh, were running in a separate isolated Docker container so as not uh, to affect each other because every worker uh, works in a different way and uh, uses different resources. So containerizing uh, was deemed to be, um, uh, to be the best way. Also, uh, information updating is happening in lots of different ways. In one case, we can go to the service and uh, request all the information that appeared in the past 30 years and uh, 30 minutes and go there um, every 30 minutes. So in another case, uh, we can expect uh, of a server service so that they will that it will themselves uh, send us the information uh, that appeared either by sch uh, scheduler uh, or uh, by uh, some uh, subscription so uh, we did like that uh, we ran tests for uh, three months uh, we got all the public message flow from github several online stores and auctions and we were getting more than a million uh, uh, messages every day and the system was coping hooray but that was a prototype POC uh, that we're testing and then we got an idea why uh, it reminded us something this approach is actually a good fit to collect any information network so why uh, shouldn't we collect not only leaks but also all VPNs proxies open or closed uh, look for publication post to bin about credentials uh, for uh, different uh, uh, people get information for CM and anti-fraud uh, so by monitoring all form, uh, forms, uh, we can also uh, collect information about uh, all passwords and then collect them in a database to check these passwords in Active Directory or in other resources. So this service, the prototype of the service will be prototype within a week or two from now at, and uh, uh, we will inform you about uh, this either in my Twitter or in the company Twitter stream. I think. Uh, well, there are still a lot of pitfalls, uh, how you can register accounts, how you can bypass 
constraints, limits, and so on and so forth. But I'm hoping that this, this presentation, you've got the understanding of what, how, and why can be monitored in terms of leaks and why it is important. I'll be happy to continue uh, communication uh, during the conference and after it. Thank you.